everybody. The state of Texas is rich in fossils. We have already made a video about Carboniferous fossils, and today we are going to show you some specimens dated back to the Cretaceous period, which was from 145 to 66 million years ago. During that time, most of the territory of modern-day Texas was covered with waters of so-called Western Interior Seaway. And, as a result, we now have huge deposits of marine sediments containing plenty of various shells, bivalves, gastropods, and ammonites. Sea urchins and corals are also common. Finding a shark tooth would not be impossible for certain locations. Due to changes in the sea level, the geology is complex and paleontological material is quite diverse. Plus, we, by no means, are experts in Cretaceous fossils of Texas. So, any species identification is very approximate. In our view, the collection shown in this video represents probably around 80% of the Cretaceous fossils found in Texas, in terms of sheer numbers rather than variety. The curvy lines found inside of the ammonite shell are called septa, they represent walls dividing the shell into separate chambers. The intricate pattern varies from species to species, and this feature helps to tell them apart. Turolites were ammonoid cephalopods, with shells in a form of so-called open spiral. Judging from the form of the shells, they have been not very fast swimmers, but rather bottom dwellers. The shells of bivalve mollusks, known under the name of oysters, dominate paleontological material in Texas. There are a few kinds of oysters. Some of them are called devil's toenails. Honestly, I doubt anybody would come up with a more appropriate name for such rocks. The credit, by the way, goes to folks who lived in medieval England. Although, obviously, the oysters have been around for hundreds of millions of years, living as unnamed creatures, until somebody pointed a finger and called them oysters, or many other names in different languages. The origins of the word oyster can be traced back to a Greek word ostrakon, or hard shell, with root ost meaning bone. These tiny oyster shells are called cat's paw. The bumps on the shell could have been originally a bit longer and probably helped the mollusks to stay in place in the muddy sea bottom. This is Turritella, a gastropod with an elongated shell. Very often, the shell is not preserved, and only the internal mold is left, creating interesting spirals that can be nicely opalized. Look closely at another specimen of Turritella that has a partially revealed internal mold. And this one is just a mold. We used to call these things casts, but a mold would be a more appropriate paleontological term because a cast is an exact replica of an object, and a mold is what is used to make a replica. Another gastropod called Tilostoma, a chubby snail. Here is an example of a sea urchin with a heart-shaped body. Such fossils are called heart urchins, sometimes sea biscuits. Unfortunately, the exact identification of the species 
would be a task for specialists, and we do not want to be wrong. Please leave a comment if you confidently recognize the species. You can find a list of the possible species in the description of the video. What we can tell, however, is that the lower side of the body is called oral and the upper one is aboral. A beautiful shell, Nithia, is basically a scallop. The internal mold of a bivalve mollusk with two sides attached to each other is called a deer heart clam. Petrified wood is also present and a lot of it is originated from the trees that were growing near the coastal line, like palm trees. This is a typical petrified palm wood with characteristic dotted pattern on the cross section. Before we move to a mystery fossil, let's take a look at a few photos of Lake Texoma, a location famous for gigantic ammonites. Plenty of fossils we saw were left in place for various reasons mostly because they were spotted on protected territories like state parks or simply were embedded in the matrix and we like to take fossils that are already eroded from sediment. No digging. You can spend a lot of precious time in the field and rarely get a good specimen. In the contrast, weathered fossil is lying on the surface, carefully washed with fine details revealed. It's like a gift of nature to those who can notice. And now, our mystery fossil. It seems to be a tooth of a reptile. We picked it from the gravel near a playground. So, stratigraphic information is lost, and it may not even be a Cretaceous fossil. Let us know if you know exactly what it is. Thanks for watching! Please subscribe if you want to keep in touch. Until next time, happy fossil hunting! Please do not forget to check the regulations before you go on the field trip. And good luck.